Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we're really excited today. We have one of our citizens of Hope Valley with us uh, again on the podcast and the star of the uh, this weekend's upcoming movie, Legend of the Lost Locket. We have Natasha Burnett back on the podcast. And thank you so much, Natasha, for coming on talk with us. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to yeah. be here again. Yeah, I know. I was just thinking about that, that man, 2021, it feels like another lifetime ago, doesn't it? Oh my goodness, a whole different world 2021 was. <laughs> <laughs> it was. But uh, but now, I mean, you've been on Wind Calls Out four seasons. Can you believe it? Seasons. That's, that's insane. Four seasons. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, well, uh, I, how do you feel? I mean, it's obviously hard to sum up the experiences of four seasons in, w- in one answer, but like, how do you think that? Minnie as a character like how do you feel like she's evolved over the course of these seasons um I feel like when she first came in uh the the character who she was when she first came in was was quite reserved um you know and I think it was just trying to acclimatize to Hope Valley and things like that but what I really like is that in the last few seasons, we actually have seen her fun side um, and her more relaxed side and her vulnerable side because Mm -hmm. the season eight and season nine, to be fair, she was very nurturing with the kids and what um, Angela was going through at school and all of that. So it was quite fun. I think at the end of season nine, when uh, Minnie and Joseph had their little picnic, and yeah. you know, I'm just, I, you know, like it's just something cute and fun just yeah. to see her in a completely different way. And then when she bought into the cafe, yeah, again, just to see a different skill of hers and to see her enjoy something else. And then, of course, yeah. season ten, there were a lot of times where we saw her with some of the other characters. You know, she spent a reasonable amount of time with um, Flomo, and you right. know, and Bill. That, yeah, and Bill, you know, and then and Lucas as well, helping with the community dinners. So I really think mm-hmm. she came into her own as yeah. the season progressed. She's coming yeah. to her own for sure. Yeah, I think so too. Like she's not just sort of the the mother character. Like he's, she's she's exactly. stands on her own. Yeah, yeah. But saying that, it must be just like a very unique situation to not only play a mother, but to have it be like an actual family, like. Do you feel like you're sort of an adopted mom in the Leacock family? Yeah, you know, when we're on set, when we're yeah. on set and filming, you know, I'm the, I I feel like the adopted mom, but I, uh-huh. you know, actually, do you know what? I feel like I'm more the fun aunt, to be oh, honest. Oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> you know, when the kids, because now they're older, they're off yeah. doing they're off with, with everyone else and, and doing their own thing. And sometimes it's like, oh, Oh, have you seen Vienna? I'm like, yeah, she's all right. She's just <laughs> winging from a tree or something. You know, right. <laughs> she's just having her own good time. Don't worry about her. Um, yeah, so you know, it's 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 great to be part of it in that sense and sort of have like this fun auntie friend no. vibe going with them. Yeah. I bet. I bet that would be fun. Yeah. So in, with these, you have all these scenes at the cafe. And uh, would you say that in real life you're like a good cook or or not? I I like to cook. Uh-huh. I, I I like to try pretty much anything in a kitchen. You know, let's be real; it doesn't always go well. I <laughs> the amount of times I actually had to do it the other day with something. I was trying something in the air fryer, like I try everything <laughs> in the air fryer, and it didn't work out. And I just had to throw it out. But you know, I I do I do like cooking. I like to yeah. just try a bit of everything. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it, are those hard? So is this hard? I know that food scenes can be a nightmare for mm-hmm. actors. Not only the eating part of it, but but just the continuity and like keeping it, that can be a, a real pain. I mean, is are some of those scenes challenging? Oh, for sure. Yeah. Especially when there's um, a lot of dialogue and, and a lot of action, especially if I'm in the middle of serving breakfast, you know, it's different if you're just, you know, plating a muffin or something, 
But, you know, serving a full breakfast is a whole different story. You're trying to remember what word you picked up the scrambled eggs and you put it on the plate on the other word. And then you mm-hmm. had a pause, but you couldn't quite remember how long it was. And then so the, so, so that's always interesting to do. And then especially when it's um, different angles and different shots, now you're not always standing in the same position or doing it the same way. So you're sometimes trying to do the scrambled eggs with a really long arm or something. Or yeah. to, you know, you're just trying to make it work. So it's definitely challenging, but, it, you know, it, it's always fun. We'd like to take a second from this episode of the podcast to celebrate our sponsor of this episode, and that is the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast? Do you want an inside scoop into what happens on the podcast? Do you want early access to episodes and loads of cool perks? Now is the time to become a patron of Hallmarkies Podcast. By becoming a patron, you get to access our patron Facebook group. You can request episodes or even be a guest on the podcast. And most importantly, any patron can join our monthly movie watch-alongs with stars like Paul Campbell, Natalie Hall, and more. It's as low as $2 a month to join in and become a special part of the Hallmarkies family. Please consider, and we will love you forever. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. Don't you at all to make sure you, your accent doesn't creep in? Actually, no. You know, yeah. Minnie's tone is so different to mine mm. that... Once I set, once I've settled into her, I feel like at the beginning of every season, when I'm reading the scripts, I have to just sometimes, you know, I'll say it out loud because there are certain words that Minnie says a certain way, and I've just got to get my brain wrapped around her tone again mm. for the mm-hmm. for another year, sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. That that <laughs> that's interesting that it's not as much even that's just the accents, but just the character. Like you're in the character. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's actually a nice character to sort of sit in because yeah. once you're in her, once I'm in her, I'm in her. So I don't sort of lose it. She's just uh-huh. a whole new person. So I just yeah. kind of shift completely. Now in the last couple seasons, Joseph has had sort of a faith journey. And mm-hmm. also Cooper had a sort of a faith journey. Uh, he didn't know if he wanted to go to church, if he believed. Like, how, what has that been like to sort of approach? Because the show doesn't necessarily usually outright deal with themes of faith. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I actually really love that the Canfields have come in and dealt with faith from um as a whole family, mm-hmm. I think I think it affects everyone in the family in different ways. And, of course, primarily it affects Joseph and what he wants to do. But then, of course, it affects Minnie and how, how she does things. And, um, of course, like you mentioned, the Cooper. Um, and I think it, it's just navigating different characters navigating it, different ages and different positions, but all the same subject matter. And I really love that we can show that. And um, because I feel like the Harties, when they do tweet us, you know, they do all, you know, different ages. They all can relate to something one of our characters is going through for whatever reason. So it's just, it's just really nice to be able to have the opportunity to to explore Mm -hmm. that in different ways yeah it's been really nice because I mean for a long time there wasn't even a pastor in Hope Valley like it was not a like faith-based show really at all and uh and so I've appreciated the last couple of years that they have I think with some tact like uh, tackled some of those topics I appreciate that Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I don't know if this is too spoilery, but you know we got a little uh, hint that Minnie might, is, might be buying the cafe. Is there anything you can tell us about that coming forward, going forward? Well, the thing is, she did buy into it already. Oh, yeah. From season nine. So you know she does. She, you know she does have the cafe. She does spend a lot more time this season in the cafe. Oh, and it definitely okay. is um, a place where a lot 
happens for the Canfields and with other characters, with mm -hmm. her and other ca various characters. Mm -hmm. It just seems to be like a almost like a therapy room. Yeah, season, I think. <laughs> <laughs> is, is there a chance they will reach the? We don't ever be Minnie's cafe. I, I don't know. Maybe, I'm maybe. Really, no. You know, <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh -huh. I mean, we, we actually at one point, Viv actually pointed this out to me that something did shift, and I mm -hmm. didn't notice myself. So I'll be. I'm sure the Hearties will notice. Yeah, they notice yeah. Everything. So yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you had to to pick one item to bake, like if you were going to make a cake or cookies or bread or something like that, what would you make? What do you think you're... I, I, do you know what? My answer every time these days lately is churros because oh. I've become a pro at making churros and I just love them. So. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. That sounds good. <laughs> Um, so what's it like shooting in Hope Valley, you know, with the costumes and the set and just all of that? It's always been um, such like a time leap. And, yeah. and because it's all on one set, uh -huh. that's sometimes the best part because being on the same set, you feel like you're in a whole new world. So yeah. you, know, you come out of your trailer in your costume and, and, and you do, you feel like you're in a different space twilight zone yeah. um and so it's all it's always nice to sort of it's actually very nice to be on one set all the time mm -hmm. um and from the way hope valley looks pre-season to during the season you know it's such a change they do so much they do yeah. so much with the set it's such a great job i'm sure yeah it's got to help you kind of get in character to be in the clothes and and all of that yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure, definitely, mm -hmm. yeah, because, yeah. you know, walking around the little cobblestones and the uh -huh. town, it's very... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, in what way would you say you're most like Minnie and which would you say you're you're most unlike her? Um... I'm, I don't. I don't think I, I. I'm far more silly than Minnie is. That's definitely mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely one thing she's not. <laughs> right. <laughs> um. Yeah. Let's see. How am I like Minnie? Hmm. I'd probably say we're quite level-headed. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty level-headed. Yeah. 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 That's definitely <laughs> that's what we have in common. <laughs> From the award-winning author of Bene Mitzvah Mistake comes a story of the things that tie us together, the things that separate us, and what happens when fake dating gives two people a real shot at forgiveness. The Dating Contract is the second book in Stacey Agdern's Last Girl Standing series and is available from Tool Publishing and wherever books are sold. For more about Stacey, go to her website, stacyagdern.com. That's stacyagdern.com or use the affiliate link below. So were you surprised by last season with the breakup of Elizabeth and Lucas? Did that did that surprise you? Not really. Not really. Okay, <laughs> good. Yeah. <laughs> it surprised me. I mean, cuz well, what surprised me is, is that it just it seemed like it just there was such a shift midway through the season from a viewer's perspective mm -hmm. that it was like, what, what, what just happened? Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like, wow, that was a ride. That was a ride. <laughs> well, maybe, you know what, maybe I'm not, I wasn't as surprised because I saw it. Yeah. I guess I saw it coming. Yeah. yeah you you know, did. read it beforehand and then you're uh -huh. just like, oh, I see where we're going with this. Yeah. <laughs> Well, what do you think uh, season 11, are people going to, uh, like, obviously you can't give spoilers or anything, but like just in general, what do you think people are going to enjoy about season 11? Season 11 has actually so many themes going on it throughout mm -hmm. the season that I think the viewers will find it actually very interesting. There's sort of, mm -hmm. There's a bit of mystery going on. It's just a it's just a fun season for so many so many characters and so yeah. many reasons. And there's always um, 
good things happening throughout the season to 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 lift everyone's spirits but there's there's i think this season there's like a good balance between um situations going awry and then you know something that comes along to to balance that out which i think is always really nice that it's not you know one sided and you can actually see the the good with the bad and the in between yeah. and yeah that's cool. Well, we're really excited for it, of course. <laughs> very, very excited. And uh, and well, let's talk about your new movie. This is so fun, Legend of the Lost Locket. Um, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about what the movie is? Yeah, so um, an antique dealer based in London um, is on the search for the other half of her locket, uh, a locket, I should say, that her mother had originally started the quest for. Unfortunately, her mother passed away and she felt that she should honour the journey to find the other half of the locket. Um, She continues that journey and it takes her to a small town in Massachusetts, which is made up, by the way, people might wonder what is, I don't know where this place is, but it is, it's uh, fictional. Um, and in this town, she continues her search and she comes up against a sheriff that she clashes mm-hmm. with initially. Yes. Um, who then assists in her quest to find the other half of the locket. And during all of this, she gets to know and love the town and the townspeople. And, um, and the sheriff. And the sheriff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very good very good yeah it seems like it's, it's like a bit of a mystery yes there's a yeah. there's a little bit of mystery in there which is a fun mm-hmm. addition mm-hmm. yeah uh so that must have been so fun when you found out you're gonna work with Viv oh yeah so um yeah so we actually serve as producers on the movie as well oh cool yes because that. we did come up with the concept oh so it was something that we were very excited when we found out that they had decided to green light the project um because it was we we knew we wanted to do the rom-com element was always going to be there but we we would have loved to have added a little bit of mystery and for it to actually work well and it Mm -hmm. did so we were really excited about that so you like pitched the idea to Hallmark? We did. We oh. did. Pitch the idea. Yes. <laughs> That's cool. And so then they got then they got a writer on board. So we and... actually actually Viv knew the writer from the oh. Haley Dean mysteries. Michelle, okay. such an amazing writer. And when we came up with the initial concept, um, we thought, well, why don't he, he said, well, I'm going to see how Michelle feels about this. This, this, if she'd be willing to write this. And she absolutely was on board, um, mm. which was amazing. And then we took it to another producer who, who in turn was able to pitch it the right way to, to Hallmark and, and they loved it. So that, that was great that we had a writer on board because she, completely understood where we wanted to go with this because she knew him so well from the Haley Deans and and she knows how to write for him really well but I have to say she wrote for me really well as she was writing for a British character so um, uh-huh. it was amazing she was amazing so you have your accent in this movie I do I have my natural oh. accent which is so nice yeah <laughs> that's great that's really good one it's so exciting your first lead right for homework first lead for Hallmark so it's just it's ah it's it's yeah so exciting (laughs) that's so exciting I I love that I love that you just made it happen that's awesome congratulations thank you thank you yeah it was it was shocking it was a shock to us as well because we just didn't know you just don't know when you put these ideas in whether because of course you think your idea is great (laughs) it's just your idea yeah. I'm just not sure if everyone else does. So mm-hmm. we were very, very lucky. So we're very grateful for that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, so you had director Kevin Fair. We did. He's a legend. He's done, yeah. done all a bunch of signs yeah. delivered. I mean, perfect for this story. He he was, you know, we spoke to him via Zoom initially, and he absolutely got where we wanted to go with this. He was totally 
in the same headspace as us. So it was such an easy choice after speaking to him to go with him because he absolutely sure. understood the script and he was just great. He was yeah. absolutely great. Yeah. So where was this and when was this filmed? So we shot it um, in November, last November. Okay. Uh, sort of end of November into December after when calls finished. And um, then we uh, we were out mostly in Langley, actually. Langley and Fort Langley, we were shooting out there at various locations. Um, so, yeah, it was it was a nice three weeks to yeah. end the year. Uh-huh. <laughs> what do you think that the Hallmarkies will like most about this movie? What makes it stand out? I think that it's, I like the idea of the antique stealer and Uh the fact that she's British. And I actually think the viewers will like that, the sort of fish out of water um, concept, along with the mystery element to it as well. Mm -hmm. I think that makes it a little bit different. So I think that will, um, that will just make it, I think, a fun watch for people who Mm -hmm. like different genres on Hallmark or yeah. kind of put into one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. Well, and it must be nice to have your co-lead be somebody you already have chemistry with. So you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, no, that, that makes it so much easier for sure. Yeah. Uh, Cause the first day of shooting was actually the last, or oh, one, oh, oh no, one of the last scenes of the movie. Uh-huh. So I swear that happens. Point, seems like that happens so much that the first the one time. of the first scenes they shoot is the kiss scene. <laughs> yeah. All the time. So it yeah. was just like this is it's good that we already know each other and uh-huh. we're just comfortable with each other and we could just get straight into the right. scenes and 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 everything just rolled on really nicely. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. Well, your family, friends, they must be excited. Yeah. You're the lead. (laughs) (laughs) You're like, everybody tune in. (laughs) Yeah, like, watch it. Please watch it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Very cool. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. You did, last time, you did our uh, regular Get to Know You questions. So I'm going to have you do our holiday uh, okay. Get to Know You questions. So if you think you're... Uh, Get your Christmas like cap on. <laughs> hey. All right, you ready? Okay. okay. <laughs> First question: What is your favorite holiday drink? Holiday drink. Hot cocoa or eggnog or something like that. Oh, it's gonna have to be a hot chocolate because we don't really yeah. do eggnog in England. That's oh, not okay. Really, it's not really a thing. <laughs> okay. Good. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. Uh, what is your favorite holiday cookie or treat? Oh, what was I obsessing about this year? Just gone. Well, you know what? Usually it's got to be mince pies. Yeah. It's, it's going to have to be mince <laughs> pies with a good dollop of cream. Oh, <laughs> yeah. My UK friends, they all love those. I got to try. I've never tried it. They. Like, I, I want to say they're good because I like them. But... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You might not feel the same. <laughs> yeah. I mean, are you able to find good ones in the, in you, in the, in BC, in Canada? No. No, yeah, unfortunately, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody probably could do well 
if they if they opened a pie shop they do yeah. have they do have a british um a british butchers actually that does that does import some uh -huh. so yeah so there is somewhere for me to get them whether they're good or that's the question <laughs> uh, all right what is your favorite christmas song or carol Oh, do you know what? There's <laughs> um, Nat King Cole. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Chestnuts no, roasting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that one's that one's classic. Very good. Works. Yes. <laughs> uh, all right. What is your favorite classic Christmas movie? I only watched it recently, as in, I think on the was it on the plane home this last year gone? I think it was. Uh -huh. The Holiday. Oh, yeah. I really like it. <laughs> That's a good plane movie. We talk about this all the time on the podcast because you have to be very careful about what you watch on the plane because you don't want anything to make you cry. Everybody yeah, was looking no. at you like, what's wrong with you, you know? And uh, you don't want anything like too tense, you know, no. to make y'all, you know, wound <laughs> up. And, uh, and so it's got to be like really just like happy cheerful yeah i i, I watched yeah. elf as well yeah that's yeah. another solid yeah. choice that's yeah choice. I, I hadn't seen that one either yeah so, yeah <laughs> uh, i was reading the other day somebody was saying on twitter that they watched they were like oh i watched society of the snow on the plane which like is about a plane crash i'm like why would you watch oh the plane? <laughs> watch the plane crash on the plane like <laughs> epic fail terrible choice <laughs> um, uh, yeah the holiday is, is really cute it's really really yeah cute. although I like the Kate Winslet side much better than the camera yes side. yeah yes 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 I know what you mean yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like uh, the old man when he says uh, you're 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 uh, playing the um, best friend in your own life in your own story. Yeah. Your leading lady. I love oh, oh, he was so sweet. Oh, yeah, I love that. Was yeah. really good. <laughs> All right. Which do you like better, Scrooge or the Grinch? The Grinch. Okay. Good. Okay. We just figured they're both characters who hate Christmas and kind of come along, you know, a lot. <laughs> come. All right. Which do you like better, clear lights or colored? Clear. Mm hmm okay mm. would you rather be in a snowball fight or build a snowman snowball fight yeah <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> i mean the thing with building a snowman is you have to have a lot of snow yeah, yeah. and usually it gets very disappointing because you look around yeah. and you think there's enough snow only yeah. to find there is not <laughs> right exactly <laughs> exactly all right uh would you consider yourself a good gift wrapper or not I think I'm a good gift wrapper. I have improved over the two oh, good. years. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right. Last question. Do you have okay. an ugly Christmas sweater? I don't. Oh. I need to purchase one. Yeah, you need to get one up there in Canada. It's freezing. I don't even have a Christmas. You're jumper. like, all my sweaters are great. They're not ugly. <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah well very good you answered all the questions <laughs> congratulations <laughs> we're so excited about the new season and the new movie so congratulations oh thank you thank you i am so i cannot wait so yeah. excited so do you have social media or anything like that people follow oh, yeah yeah instagram is natasha.burnett and twitter is just natasha burnett great Thanks for Natasha for coming on the podcast. This was so much fun to get to talk with her. I had a blast. And uh, let me know what you think about all the different things that we talked about in the comments or on Twitter. Love to hear your thoughts. And you can follow me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, or on Rotten Tomatoes. Check that out. Also, make sure you're following the podcast, Hallmarkies Pod, Hallmarkies Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. We really, really appreciate that. And if you are 
watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate that so much. We also have our patron group and merch store. So check that out. Yeah, there's tons of Hardee's inspired merch and the Patreon is the best way you can support us. And uh, you get tons of cool, cool perks. We did a uh, When Calls the Heart watch along this last month uh, to get ready for the new season. So that was a lot of fun. So please, please check out the Patreon and the merch store. And thanks again to Natasha. And we'll talk to y'all later. Bye.